Right, this is the walkthrough on the can crusher. This is basically a hydraulic power unit. Anything you'd see here can be built with the common log splitter parts. Um, uh, and then I, I basically just built this box. It's 12 by 12 um, square. It's actually 12 and an eighth inside. And I got a hole here. It's about 10 inches wide. There's about a one inch lip there. It's 28 inches long in the box length. That allows me a little more capacity. Um, and then this plate here is your shear plate. So when the cans go down in there, they get caught at that point. That will cut the cans off. It sticks over about a half inch. I've got about a one inch lip there. About a one inch lip there. And of course the crushing chamber, which is almost ready to be empty. Um, this is just metal mesh, anything you could use. Um, it's 12 inches at the bottom. And uh, let's see. 12 inches at the bottom. The top is 31. So it's basically a trapezoid upside down. Like I said, the chamber is 28 inches long. And that box that this slides into, the door and whatnot, is uh, basically just barely under 12. So there's about an eighth inch of clearance all the way around. Um, this three quarter inch plate by six inches and it holds the rear of the pin. This angle on here is three by six, three by six, and just what I had laying around, threw it on there to basically hold that one piece in. Um, now I welded it to the side of the box, just kind of threw it together. And then on my pressure plate inside, I've got a half inch plate that's on the front of that ram. I don't know if you can see that very well. And then this plate here that actually has the other ram pin is another piece of three quarter. It's three and a half inches um, with the center pin there. And this little structure I built here is just a, a tube structure to hold this gate. You just, and you know, it's pretty sloppy. And it, it wobbles up and down, you know, back and forth. But when it starts pushing in, it's small enough that it acts as a guide because once it gets to this point, it hits there and it has to go in straight. Um, and the ram is basically the only guide. And you can actually pull this whole piece out. And um, a better idea on that would be to make this bottom angle iron a tray that would be the same height as the box. Because right now it sits outside and down from the actual box. So that's why it's a little sloppy. Um, but it works. Um, I haven't ever had a bind up or anything. Um, and then you got your basic 4 inch hydraulic ram uh, which produced 17 tons with this 5 horsepower motor and a 6 gallon per minute pump and 24 inch stroke and like I said the box is 28 you want to make sure you make this door long enough to where when it's fully closed the cans can't fall back out here you know make it make sure and then when this thing is, ram is all the way back this actually goes all the way back, but you'll notice there's about a three inch space right here that it stops before. So when it's all the way back, that piece doesn't fall out and get bound up outside. I put a chain on it for future use. I'm going to put a, a hand pump hydraulic jack with a little lever so I can pull that pin out. That pin is an inch and a half. It gets a lot of pressure on it. You basically have to drive it out with a hammer. Um, so I hook up a ram to that and be able to pop that with just hand power on a hand crank. This plate on the end, half inch. It's got a half inch rib around it also. It holds the other part of the hinges. And it's about two inches tall. It's just another piece of scrap metal I had laying around. And this end plate should probably be a little thicker or have some ribs welded on here and here so it doesn't bend. So as you can see, it's still got pressure on it even though the ram's not on. It's got a good quarter inch gap there because all those cans are so squished in there. That's why you have to drive these pins out and that's a future little deal. I didn't do it for cosmetics and just kind of like I said build it out of scrap. Um, later on I will uh, wrap the side here and enclose it, put a label on it and you know maybe something clever, I don't know, name it. <laughs> um, and the piece of angle iron there, they are three by six, they're five sixteenths thick. Um, because they're all under tension load. 
and uh, like I said, it's just a little tube structure I built just to, as a guide. But that's about all there is to it. Um, the hydraulic lines, I have some quick couplers here uh, that go to my power unit. Um, so the nice thing about having quick couplers, if you guys have some, you know, tractors or whatnot, you can uh, basically pull the skidster right up to it. If you got a quick coupler attachment, plug it in. You run the hydraulics off of that, or even a, some of these uh, farm tractors have uh, these. Uh, quick couplers on the front and you plug them into that and I hide my the rest of my log splitter my pressure plate and I hide all this junk from the neighbors with, with my firewood pile so oh what's behind there uh, who knows you know I got a bird feeder but yeah it's future projects uh, got some snowmobile parts some uh, turn into probably a, a riding snowblower is probably what I'm going to do with it. A bunch of I-beams I use to put a winch in my garage, but from the street it looks like it's all firewood. Um, hope you enjoyed the video. Thanks for watching it. Um, and go get out there and build something. And post it. Let me see what you can make. Thanks.